Hello from Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art. We would like to share with you our latest project titled Timplada. Timplada, the art of Ilongo cuisine, is created to support Iloilo City's application to the UNESCO Creative Cities for Gastronomy. This is composed of an art exhibition at Hulot Gallery in Ilomoca, a series of online educational programs called Merienda Talks, and lastly, an Iloilo City food map. This Merienda Talk is sponsored by National Commission for Culture and the Arts, National Book Development Board, Iloilo Business Park, Festive Walk Iloilo, Bibal Publishing, Philippine Economic History, Our Awesome Planet, and Kaunta Iloilo. Hello everyone, I'm Janine and I will be your host for today. This is our first Merienda Talk. And before we put a spotlight on Ilongo cuisine specifically, we would like to first discuss with you the general, what food, Filipino food really is. How culinary practices and local ingredients have shaped Philippine culture. We have initially titled this talk as an overview of Filipino cookbooks and their authors. But we've tweaked the title just a little bit to have a more comprehensive discussion to cover food, books, and Philippine culture. To start our discussion, I'd first like to ask a poll question. We would like to revive the debate on, are you for or against the standardization of adobo? We'd like to see your answers. There are poll choices that are down in your Facebook uh, slide. Please click on your answer there and we will discuss what is the majority answer. Are you for or against the standardization of adobo? While your answers are being tallied, I will first introduce you to our speaker. Our speaker for today is Anthony John Balisi. He's director one of National Book and Development Board. Anthony John Balisi is a self-professed book geek. He reads, writes, and collects books. An anthropologist by nature, by training, he is during the American colonial regime. He is an active member of the Ugnayang Tang Agham Tao, Incorporated, or UGAT, the Anthropological Association of the Philippines, and the Freelance Writers Guild of the Philippines. Please all welcome Sir Anthony. Hello, Sir. Hello, uh, maayong hapon. Good afternoon to everyone. Hi. So um, thanks, Janine, for that introduction. Again, I am Anthony John Balisi of the National Book Development Board, and I welcome everyone once again to Ilomocas Merienda Talk. This afternoon, we will not just talk about merienda, as we'll be discussing a lot of sumptuous dishes from all over the Philippines. So we'll be starting from Batanes, going down to Visayas, and down to Sulu and Tawi-Tawi. Um, again, just a quick background about myself. I'm a bibliophile, meaning I love books, and I love to read a lot of books. Also, another hat I am wearing right now is that I am an anthropologist, so we have a lot of talking to do on culture. Lastly, I love to eat. Yeah, we all love to eat, of course. Uh, I love to explore various cookings from all over the corners of the universe. So with that, I think I am giving you an idea on what we're going to talk about this afternoon. So it's about food, it's about books, and it's about Philippine culture. Next slide, please. Just, sir, I would just like to share what um, they answered. 93% um, yes, yes. said that they're against the standardization, and only one person said that they for the standardization. So oh, great. we'll discuss this later on. Yeah, yeah. I'll Please be talking ahead. about standardization later. And it's it's good to uh, hear your answers. Yeah. So that's that's it. So I'm going to talk about food, books, and Philippine culture. Can we go to the next slide, please? So as you all know, we have a lot of books on food. So like 
we have cookbooks or the cookery books like the one uh, made by uh, Mama Sitas. These are the recipe books wherein you have uh, instructions on how to cook, how to prepare the food. We also have historical food books like uh, the one that um, came out recently on uh, Pigafetta's Philippine uh, Picnic. This is written by Feliz Prudente Santa Maria. We also have culinary essays. Uh, Doreen Fernandez is uh, one of the more popular authors when it comes to this type of food books. Uh, on your screen, you can see the book by Doreen Fernandez, Sarap. We also have um, something really new, archaeology, new in the Philippines, um, archaeology and food. So University of San Carlos Press came out, I think, in 2017 with Ancient Filipino Diet. So this book talks about what our ancestors ate and what was the diet of the early Filipinos. And we also have anthropology and food. Uh, on your lower right, you can see the book by Jim Eder. Uh, this is On the Road to Tribal Extinction. This talks about um, the Batak's integration, Batak of Palawan, their integration to the current economic system, thereby changing um, their food preferences and their diet. So uh, it talks about um, counting the calories, calorie intake based on the previous food diet of the Batak and the current consumption of the batak. So that's anthropology and food. Of course, you can't, you, can't, you can't take out agriculture and food production when it comes to cookbooks. On your screen, you also have, I think I put their root crops in there um, and how to cook them. Also, there are books on food and nutrition. There are also books, contemporary fiction and food. Like you see in your screen, um, there's, there's a, a book on poetry. It's all about, uh, Poetry and rice, how to cook rice, and it's mixed up with poetry. And of course, there's food and language. So there's a book by Edgy Polistico on um, uh, Dictionary of Philippine Food. So this afternoon, I want to focus on cookbooks and cookery books. Uh, so that's what we're going to discuss, yes, for the next 40 minutes. So let me just start off my discussion with a very old cookbook. This was published in the 1970s. I do hope some of you are familiar with this book. This was quite popular in every Filipino household back then. So this is Best Recipes for the Home, which I would claim to have annotated when I was just two years old. Next slide, please. Let me just show you my annotations of this book. So this is my mom's cookbook. And yeah, uh, I had fun annotating it when I was two years old. So those, these are my annotations in the book. So I use different colors of pen to mark um, certain. Uh, <laughs> so it was fun. It was really fun writing on my mom's cookbook. So that was my first encounter with a cookbook. And uh, well, not well in general. Uh, I'm, I, there's really a lot of books at home, and uh, yeah. We have a lot of cookbooks also in the kitchen, and this is one of my favorites, as you can see on the screen. So I wrote a lot. Of, I think on all pages, I have my notes on all pages. Yeah. Next slide, please. So this afternoon, I'm going to give you a trip of um, uh, from Luzon to Visayas to Mindanao on uh, uh, the flavors of the Philippine Islands. So we're going going on a food trip. Incidentally, there's a book called Food Trip published by NCCA. Uh, although this is not a cookbook, but it's interesting. It's, it, 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 it matches my, my, my presentation, so I put it there. It's, it's um, renowned Filipino writers talking about food. So you have Nick Joaquin in this collection, in this anthology. You have also a national artist, Rio Alma, in this book. Of course, we all know that rice is a staple. In every, um, yeah, uh, can we go back to the first slide with the map? Okay. Of course, we all know that rice is, is a staple in every Filipino's uh, uh, food table. So I'll start off with rice. So we have, uh, we have on the screen, there's a book about kamalig. It talks about, um, kamalig is a, is a storage for rice. It talk, this, this book talks about rice production in the Philippines. So if, if you want to learn about rice production from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, this would be a good book. And also there's a rice book uh, on the lower right. This is by Chef uh, Tatung. This is called Rice on the Occasion. And this book features 20 rice recipes. So it's subtitled From Kanin to Kakanin. 
so it talks about the basic uh the basic way to cook rice basic rice recipes like uh, the broth the lugao and to the more complex one like the puto and the uh, bibingka and this is one is written quite uh, easily so even your even your even your 10 year old child can easily uh, follow the instructions on this book so this is one is a good book a uh, good good primer on on rice recipes on the philippines next slide please so after that overview uh, we're going to luzon so first stop is batanes uh, we have we have delicate balance uh, this is a book by Cora Alvina, Marian Roses, Marian Pastor Roses, and photographed by Neil Oshima. This was published by Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo in 2016. Uh, the book explores how food, ecology, nature, and tradition have shaped the people of Batanes, the, it the Ibatan and Itbayat, uh, their way of life in the last 4,000 years. So the book likewise presents an explanation of how these beautiful people manage to husband resources without compromising nature. As you all know, one of the more special food in Batanes is the dorado or the dolphin fish or, or, or locally known in Batanes as the arayu. So the arayu as, uh, uh, involves several traditional rituals, practices, uh, the way you catch an arayu, uh, the way you, you cut it, the way you prepare food, uh, based on Arayu, there are a lot of ritual practices, and these are well documented in this book. Next up would be Ilocos. So we have a book, Naimas. Naimas, which means um, uh, masarap, uh, tasty. Uh, Naimas, the food heritage of Ilocos Sur. This one is by Congressman Divi Savaliano, Chef Henny Season, and again photographed by Neil Oshima. So this was published in 2015. The Imas is a cookbook that explores the culinary tradition of Ilocos food. So this features 53 authentic Ilocano recipes from 32 municipalities and two cities of Ilocos Sur from north to south, uh, specially chosen by the authors. And this book seeks to preserve and promote the ingredients, heritage, and methods used in Ilocos Sur. So one of the more popular recipes in this book is the bagnet. Of course, we're all familiar with the bagnet. This is a deep fried, crispy pork belly dish. Well, uh, well, it's it's masarap as an ulam nat merienda. So maybe some well, some of us might want to cook bagnet for dinner later. Um, next we go to the cordilleras. So I'm I'm, I'm showing you right now another book. This is Heir, heirloom recipes from the cordilleras, uh, written by Judy Carino Fangloy. And this was published by Philippine Task Force for Indigenous Peoples, Indigenous Peoples' Rights. So the book documents the heirloom recipes from Benguet, Ifugao, Mountain Province, Kalinga, and Apayao. The book is a project to keep the wisdom of the Cordillera ancestors alive through food. This is a collection of around 100 recipes from around the Cordillera, which were collected through food workshops and interviews among knowledge holders. So first, then we move to the central Luzon. Next slide, please. So we have two books from central Luzon. This is the Kabalen Kitchen, Pampanga's Culinary Treasures. So Pampanga has been noted uh, to be the food capital of the Philippines for pr producing some of the best loved uh, versions of local Filipino dishes and for its roster of well-known food specialties, experts, chefs, food tours, and festival. Of course, I am very quite sure that Ilo Ilo is a contender for this title. The book, uh, also, we have another book. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. The book brings Kapangpangan dishes to those interested in Kabalen uh, cooking in their kitchen. The book shows the love passion and pride for Pampanga's culinary tradition and shares how these are inspired by the vision for the Kabalen chain of restaurants. Another book from Central Luzon from the Pampanga is Aching Lilian's Heirloom Recipes, Romancing the Past to Traditional Kalutong Kapampangan. This is published by Kapampangan um, Center for Kapampangan Studies, Holy Angel University. The book collects culinary recipes, again, from Pampanga, Philippines, and um, traditions are strong in their cooking methods. 
and are well preserved as evidence in the heirloom recipes listed in this book. Okay, next slide, please. So next stop is we go down south of Luzon. So we have we now go to the Bicol area, the Bicol region. Uh, one of the featured book here is the Coconut Cookery of Bicol by Honesto General. This was published by Bookmark in 1994. The book has been described as a fun book disguised as a cookbook. So uh, uh, it contains a brief autobiographical uh, uh, story about the author with an extended discussion on food. The recipes are authentic Bicol audibles, edibles. Uh, as, as the pre, uh, preface says, uh, the author has captured the lightheartedness and the familiarity one must have with food, something perhaps akin on how the French supposedly rhapsodize about wines, except that Filipinos do not rhapsodize, Bicol, except that Bicolanos do not rhapsodize. Bicolanos only look up in the narrow-eyed delight as the gata, the coconut milk, flows through their taste buds, soothing the skin of the labuyo, the hot pepper, on their tongues and enhancing the delights of laing, or gabi, or taro dish, or the crab or fish, which completes the dish. So that comes from the preface of the book. In connection with the gata, we have another coconut cookbook. Uh, well, this is not specific to Bicol, but um, I'm, I'm just trying to connect since we, we, we took off from the gata, then we're talking about another coconut, cook, coconut cookbook. So this is the Coconut Kitchen Appetizers Main Dishes by Maria Regina Tolentino Newport. This is, this is quite a recent book published by Anvil in 2017. So the book talks about uh, the many ways on how to prepare the coconut as an appetizer or a main dish, uh, something that's really healthy and delicious. So each recipe has been personally selected and tested and retested by the author, the reader, and the home cook in mind. This cookbook also features coconut-based recipes from the following well-known personalities in the Philippine culinary scene. Namely, we have Ami Besa and Romy Dorotan, Norma Chiquianco, Pia Lim Castillo, Elizabeth Ann Quirino, Iget Ramos, Beth Romualdez, and Edita Singian. So that's it for Luzon. Now we move to the next uh, area. Next slide, please. Uh, now we move to Metro Manila or the NCR bubble. So I'm, I'm, I'm covering uh, adjacent areas uh, on the outskirts of Metro Manila. Uh, so here's one. Here's a classic. So let's cook with Nora. Uh, this is an, a new edition which was authored by Nina Dazapuyat. This was originally published in 1979. So the older edition was quite popular in most Filipino households in the 1970s to the mid 80s. So the first one, the first one I showed you was, was the more popular. And then in 1979, this book came, Let's Cook with Nora. And again, it, it gained popularity in the late 70s up until the 1980s. And then the next book, this is Kaina by Maya Kitchen. This is published in 1991. And this is quite a practical guide for a very busy household. So this book is like a meal calendar. It outlines um, the meals uh, for a, for a four-week period. So from agahan to merienda to pananghalian to merienda sa hapon and to uh, hapunan. So this was quite popular in the 1990s, and I think it's still quite popular up until now. So there's Kaina. This is the first book, Kaina, and they came out with the second one, Kaina 2. And there's a third one, and I think I'm not quite sure if it reached the fourth. So, But this is really a good book for a very busy household. So I think I remember using this book when I was in college. And with your busy schedule, you can just look it up. I want I want bulalo, I want a kare kare. And these are easy to follow practical recipes. Um, next, we move to um, to the village, to the Desmarinas village. So what's cooking in Desmarinas village? This is by Anne Haveliosa Gloria, uh, published by Society of Makati Desmarinas Ladies. This is very new. This was this was published during the pandemic 2020. 
it's a compilation of around uh, 100 recipes for the comfort food from the residents of the exclusive subdivisions of the Dasmarinas village. Quite interesting to know what's cooking in Dasma. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so next, uh, we have Malate, A Matter of Taste by Telma Siosan San Juan. This was published in 2001 by LJC Restaurant Group and the Bookmark. So this talks about uh, how the history and how Cafe Adriato came to be and how life, how, how, how eating and how dining uh, back then in Malate was, was, was doing. So the book is um, the book is about uh, the lifestyle that came uh, with the Malate area in the 1980s. Also uh, on the on the outskirts of Metro Manila, we have Republic of Taste and Told Stories of Cavite Cuisine uh, by Ige Ramos and Forward by Ambeto Campo, published in 2018. So I, I I'm I'm I would like to read uh, the preface from Ambeto Campo. So Cavite is usually studied through historical or written records that documents the establishment of towns, the highs and lows of population and demography, the catalog of revolts and revolutions that figure in the birth of the nation. It is even possible to see its heroes and village. Again, Ramos has chosen to trace Cavite's past through its food and the process found a history rooted in its food. How geography determined the products of the land and how the waterways explained physical mobility and transfer of the Chinese, Mexican, Spanish, American, and Japanese influences over the centuries that shape, uh, that gave shape, color, and taste to their food. So this is from the foreword from Ambet Ocampo on Iget Ramos' book. Um, quite interesting also is the book called Recipes Out of Bilibid. This was published post-war, 1946. So this is a book uh, that came out of uh, the notes of a prisoner of war in Bilibid. And uh, um, when they were imprisoned in Bilibid, uh, they, someone, someone gathered uh, notes on what they want to eat after, after uh, when, 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 when they are set free. So and 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 uh, and uh, uh, the author was able to compile a book on the recipes of uh, the prisoners of war in Bilibid. So I, again, I'll be reading a uh, a few uh, excerpt from the foreword. When my nephew Chick Fowler sailed in Manila in October 1941, he carried with him a vast deal of luggage. When he returned 40 months later. All of his possessions were insufficient to fill a musset bag, contained the few letters and the Japanese that, that the Japanese had permitted him to receive. He had split the envelope and used their inner sides to write in crowded pencilized, pencil lines the recipes for unusual dishes that he collected from his fellow prisoners of war. No matter how the conversation began, it is always turned to it always turns to food. The prisoners had once relished and were determined to enjoy again. So this is from the foreword. So eventually the author was able to, um, to be released from the Bilibid. And yeah, uh, he was able to compile this book. It's a nice book. It's a very nice book. Um, next, next slide, please. So next, we now go to the Visayas. So first stop is uh, Katbalogan, Samar. So we have Karasa. Karasa means delicious in Samarnon language. And this book is uh, all about the culinary traditions of Katbalogan City in Samar province in the Philippines. So this book has five chapters. Chapter one gives a background on the history and culture of Katbalogan City that explains the culinary traditions. Chapter two centers on the everyday food of the Katbalogan, Katbaloganons. The seafood from the Makeda Bay and the farm products that are stewed, grilled, pickled, and steamed. Chapter 3 is about the fiesta fair, the delicious meat dishes from the Spanish era and the food brought by this Chinese ancestry. Chapter 4 is about sumsuman. In Filipino, that's what we call pulutan. 
the food that goes with the protected drinking sessions of the people of Katbalogan. And the last section is dedicated to the postre, the sweet delicacies with stories and heirloom recipes of the Katbalogan women. So it's quite, it's quite interesting that we have documentation of regional cuisine like this. Um, next, we have uh, something from Iloilo. This is Namit Gid, uh, published in 2015 by St. Scholastica's Academy, uh, Bacolod High School class of 1980. So Namit Gid is a cookbook of Ilongo dishes and other well lab recipes and provides comfort food for those who left home. It became an attempt to recapture the dishes they had enjoyed for meriendas, children's parties, barbecue dinners, Sunday lunches, and many more times and equations. The notes on the family traditions and recipe secret emphasize that this is part of their heritage and it is truly what makes them Bacolenos. Next up, we go to Negros. Uh, you have on your screen the Grandsa Heritage Cooking by Slow Food Community, uh, published this year. Uh, so this is uh, the Department of Tourism in partnership with Slow Food Negros Community, Negros Museum, and the provincial government of Negros Occidental launched the cookbook Negrense Heritage Cooking. It features delectable Negrense dishes ranging from vegetables to seafood to meat and even desserts. And according to DOT Secretary Berna Romula Puyat, Negros Heritage Cooking is a testament <clears throat> to the culinary traditions of the region filled with recipes that tell the stories of ingenuity, creativity, and passion. Next slide, please. So now we, know, we now go to Cebu. We have Hikai, Culinary Heritage of Cebu by Luella Teresa Eslao Alex, published by University of San Carlos Press. And this was published in um, 2013. So the book provides readers a peek into the warmth and laughter of the Cebuano household gathered around the dining table. This book contains recipes, cooking methods, cooking styles, and practices used in the Visayan cuisine. According to the author, she has written this book to hand down these recipes and traditions to the younger Cebuanos. Some of the recipes are her own. Uh, are the, some of the recipes are from her own mother, Lili Eslao, and Maria Ralios, to whom the book is dedicated. Also, another book produced um, in the Visayas is uh, Adobo Chronicles. Uh, this book is an offshoot of the Adobo Festival. And um, I think uh, uh, the Adobo Festival did not push through last year in the 2020 because of the pandemic. And the organizers decided to come up with a book. So this book is a true tribute to a dish not only that defines us as a people, but also unites us as a nation. So interesting. Later we'll talk about how do you standardize, how do you, uh, how do you cook adobo? Okay. Next slide, please. Of course, we can't talk about the Visayas food heritage without mentioning Pura Villanueva Calao. So Purificacion Villanueva Cala was a Filipino beauty queen, feminist, journalist, and a writer. She was also known to have authored one of the earlier cookbooks. So that's Condimientos, Condimia, Condimentos Indigenas, which was published in 1918. This was eventually translated as uh, Paglulutong Filipino in 1935. Paglulutong Filipino, I'm sorry. So, yeah. Uh, I think uh, these are two very important books in the history of uh, uh, food literature in the Philippines and also in food literature of Visayas. And now we go to Mindanao. Next slide, please. So we have uh, Mga Tutul Apalapa by Asad Baunto with Nash Teisman and Ika Fernandez. And this was published by Gantala Press in 2017. Uh, Mga Tutul Palapa is a cookbook that centers on the eccentric dishes made by, Banamar by the Maranao people. The book contains not only the main recipes, but also a detailed guide on how these dishes are made. The recipes include, included here are those that were passed down from his aunt, from the author's aunt and grandmother, 
And the book is also a testament to the wonderful culture of the Maranao people and their appreciation to a good meal and a family to share with. Also next, we go to uh, uh, Sambuanga, Sulu, and Tawi-Tawi, the Zambasulta area. Uh, this is the Tausug cookbook, the best of the home-cooked halal Tausug Filipino dishes by Abdulaziz Hamsain. And this was recently published in uh, 2020. The Tausug uh, cookbook is a compilation of precious family recipes passed down for many generations. This book is Hamsain's lifetime project in which he shares the recipes he learned from his family, and it is his way of preserving and promoting the rich culture of the Sulu. So, uh, we're, I mean, for those who've been to uh, Sulu and Zamboanga, I guess you're quite familiar with the black soup. So it's 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 a coconut base uh, and coconut and beef or chicken soup, and 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 uh, it's quite good. And that was what I vividly remember from from my travels to Zamboanga and Tawi Tawi. Next, we also have the Davao Cuisine, Recipes of 10 Tribes of Davao City, edited by Macario Tiu and published by Philippine Women's College of Davao in 2014. So this cookbook features recipes of the Kadayawan, Kadayawan tribes of Davao, Atamanobo, Bagobo, Jangan, Patigsalug, Ubu Manuvu, Kalagan, Magindanao, Maranao, Sama, and Tausug. The book also features the cultural backgrounds of these tribes in which the dishes originated from. It gives the readers a glance of the life and culture of other people by giving them a taste of their local specialties. So it's really a mix of uh, food. It's really a way of going into uh, someone's culture. Next, I want to feature some of the some of our celebrities. Uh, uh, well, uh, celebrities when it comes to food writing. Next slide, please. So now we look. We now look at the stars, the authors, and writers of these cookbooks, the prime movers in documenting and writing about Filipino cuisine. So of course we have uh, Doreen Fernandez. She hails from Silay, Negros Occidental. And she wrote a lot of books on, she wrote a lot of essays on uh, which were eventually compiled into books on Philippine food, Philippine culture. And among these are Tikim, Sarap, Palayok, uh, Lhasa, and many, many more. Uh, yeah, we also have Nora Daza, whom we very know, whom we very much know through cooking with Nora. And of course, we all know that. Uh, Eventually, uh, her children followed her footstep. So we have Nina Daza Puyat, who also does uh, food and literature. And you have uh, uh, another, uh, one of the Dazas, uh, the Daza children, who also cooks and writes books. Next slide, please. Um, next, we have Cloud Tayag uh, from Pampanga. Cloud is known as a Filipino painter, sculptor, handy chef, food writer, and columnist in the Philippine Star. He's one of the six chefs who authored Culinaria, a guidebook to Philippine cuisine, and also served as a food stylist. So Cloud has also written a lot of uh, books on food, like Linam Nam. Uh, I think he was also the one who wrote about slow food and many more. And also, uh, we annually, the, the National Book Development Board goes to Frankfurt, and in 2019, he was one of the featured food writers in Frankfurt. And NBDB brought him along with another chef, uh, Chef Mike Maite Ontiveros Tipke. Uh, also, we have Feliz Prudente Santa Maria, who is a meticulous researcher with an extensive background in historical food research. Of course, we know uh, Miss Feliz Prudente Santa Maria for, for historical writing, like the one I featured earlier. Uh, Magellan's uh, Picafetas Philippine Picnic, and a lot more. Next slide, please. Again, we have another writer from Pampanga. This is Jean Gonzalez. He's a multi-awarded author of cookbooks and the owner of successful restaurants like Cafe Isabel and Gina's Fine Dining, and the president of the Culinary School Center for Asian Culinary Studies, or CACS. 
And we also have Mirna Segusmundo, who is also one of the authors of Culinaria. And uh, these are the people who, uh, these are the chefs who not only cook, but they also write books. So yeah, next slide, please. Um, next, uh, we have uh, Iget Ramos, who's also a chef and who is also a book designer and who also was, is also a writer. And Iget wrote the, the, the book about Cavite and uh, he's coming up with a really good book on Maria, uh, Maria Orosa. It's, 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 uh, it's a new edition of Maria Orosa's recipes and I'll be talking about that later. We also have another food columnist from the Inquirer, from the Philippine Daily Inquirer, Miki Phoenix, and she wrote about uh, also a lot of books on Philippine food and culture. Yeah. So uh, this is just an overview of the authors and the stars of uh, food writing in the Philippines. There's a lot more, but with a limited time, I'm only featuring these eight people. Okay, next slide, please. So. Um, some of the musings on some some musings some some uh, uh, musings on what we have discussed. So one, uh, we are very diverse as a nation. So like like we have 180 languages in the Philippines, and I guess you have we also have a lot of ways of cooking rice and cooking adobo and cooking sinigang. So there's diversity in culture, diversity in ethnicity. Of course, that would also mean diversity in food cultures, diversity in food preparation, and diversity on uh, food preferences and cooking. So as you can see, there's a book, Milk Pigs and Violet and Gold. Uh, this is a compendium of, of food preparations from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And also, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you right now Panaderia, it's uh, the baking tradition. So from, again, it, it explores the various baking traditions, the various biscuit traditions in the Philippines. Of course, we all know that traditions dictate food preparation and cooking. However, there's also that individuality in each of us, which brings me now to the concept of creativity and ingenuity. And I'm showing you right now the adobo book, which, uh, well, we have, we have, as we all know, we have a, a, a sort of standard way of cooking adobo, but there are also ways to jazz up that, that standard way of cooking adobo. So you can cook adobo with, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess uh, the basic, there are basics and there are also innovations and um, ways of jazzing up how you cook, how you cook these traditional dishes. Next slide, please. Um, next slide, please. So again, uh, like like the poll earlier, uh, should there be standardization of food or should there be a standard way of cooking sinigang, standard way of cooking uh, adobo? There was quite a buzz on social media a few weeks back with the move uh, of TTI to standardize adobo and sinigang. But as early as 1918, we have been codifying our recipes. We have been writing them in books. We have been publishing them. And by way of codifying things, we are setting, in a way, some sort of standard. Like, as you can see, there's a book here, Libro Tipe Nagluto. Uh, this is in a Lucano book, book, book published in 1934. So by way of writing things, by way of saying that you have to put one cup of vinegar, one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt. That's a way of standardization of the way you prepare food. So uh, I guess it's it's really a question of, yeah, we have been codifying things and standardizing things, but when whenever we read this cookbook, there's still that individuality in in all of us that we can always jazz up what's in our cookbooks. So again, here, here are some cookbooks, which in a way codified uh, how food are cooked. So there's Libro Ti Panagluto, uh, published in 1934. There's also the Easy Filipino Cookbook, which is composed of 100 classics made simple. And there's the Quintessential Filipino Cooking, which features, I think, 70 plus 
Filipino, uh, commonly cooked Filipino food. Um, in a way, it's codified, and I think in that way, it's also standardized. Yeah. Next slide, please. So also, uh, like I've mentioned, um, um, as an anthropologist, I'm, I'm quite keen about heritage and culture. So food talks about our identity. So as you can see, uh, this is a book by Doreen Fernandez and Tikim explores the Filipino-ness of our food and our culinary heritage. And um, yeah, also with the same book, uh, as the title says, I am Filipino. And this is the way we cook. So it sets us, it sets a tone that uh, this is the way Filipinos cook. Uh, this is our identity. This is our culinary heritage. And uh, also, there's that, that ultimate guide that culinaria. Uh, so culinaria is is more of bringing understanding, greater understanding of Filipino cuisine into the bigger market, into the international market. So culinaria is a compilation of core principles of Filipino cooking from the diverse regions and cultural practices of the country upheld by Filipinos. So uh, yeah, so like, like we have that diversity and we also, that culture also, traditions also dictates the way we cook food, the way our culinary heritage is uh, is what it is today. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing I want to discuss is culture dynamics and culture continuity. So like what you can see in your screen is another book by Doreen Fernandez, that's Palayok. And it talks about, it talks about the history of cooking and culinary heritage in the Philippines. So it sets a tone that um, this is how the way things are done in the past. So it's so historical. And then we also have a book, No Forks Given. Um, this is an interplay of, uh, of someone who grew up in the Philippines, moved to another, moved to another place and, and thereby moving to another place. You, you interact with the other cultures. So there's interaction, there, there's dynamism in cooking, and there's dynamism in culture. And also there's that, the new Filipino kitchen. So it explores, it, it, it bases its recipes on the traditional Filipino way of cooking, but it also integrates uh, cultures uh, that were encountered by the chefs and the authors. So it's, it's a new, in a way, it's a new Filipino kitchen. So that's the way things are. Culture is not static, it's dynamic. So whenever we interact with people, we get to know what they cook and that maybe we can influence them. Maybe they can also influence us. Um, next is that uh, we talk about globalization, imperialism, and call to action. So there are also books, cookbooks, that, 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 that uh, talks about globalization, imperialism, and call to action. So interestingly, the first book is called Taste of Control. So Filipino cuisine is a delicious fusion of foreign influences adopted and transformed um, into its unique own flavor. But to the Americans who came to colonize the island in the 1890s, it was considered inferior and lacking in nutrition. So changing the food of the Philippines was also a part of war on culture led by the Americans as they attempted to reshape our island, our culture, into something that is a reflection of their home. So Taste of Control tells, tells us what happened when American colonizers began to influence what Filipinos ate, how they cooked their food, and how they perceived their national cuisine. So as you can see, it's, it's, food can also be a way of subjugating uh, a, set, a group of people or a group of community. Um, next, we have the book Maki Sao Sao. Uh, so on July 30, 2018, I think we, some of us were able to read on social media the violent dispersal of the Marilao plant workers of the Philippines. Uh, this is a leading uh, con condiment manufacturer 
and Nutri Asia, and uh, there was uh, shocking violence on how how that um, that dispersal took place. So uh, the shocking violence of the incident crystallized for a lot of us to see the truth that food we choose to buy and to eat uh, can be can be can be oppressive. So because of the way they are grown, made, and distributed reflects our values and it may affect other people and inevitably it may shape the world we live in. So uh, this book is animated. Um, the animated power of the book, the book Makisaw Sao, features different women advocates and activists, writers, artists, mother, sister, who show us how eating can be an agent of change and the site of a resistance, whether to personal cho choices or political action. The book also contains 36 easy recipes of vegan condiments and main dishes that need no special appliance or expert cooking skills to make healthier plant-based eating affordable and fuss-free, giving us more time and energy for greater involvement. So next slide, please. So next, uh, I think we ha also have to think about uh, the way we cook, the way we eat, and the way we write. So why do we cook? And uh, what food do we primarily produce? And what food do we consume? And uh, what do we want to write about? What do we want to read about in terms of cookbooks? And how do we sustain communities? This is not a locally published book. This is uh, a book by Jane Goodall, a noted primatologist, and it's called Harvest of Hope, A Guide to Mindful Eating. So whenever we cook, whenever we eat, whenever we prepare food, we have to put in mind uh, how the food, how that food came to be uh, before we, it was placed on the supermarket, before it was placed in the wet market, where were this source from? Uh, were this produced uh, in a manner that is sustainable to the environment? Were this produced in a manner that were sustainable for the communities? Like, for example, uh, uh, if we're using palm oil, uh, were there forests which were, which were uh, uh, eradicated just to produce palm oil? Or if we're, if we're cooking beef, uh, were there... Were there uh, communities which were which were uh, 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 which were which were moved away just to open 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 spaces for ranches so th that that's what Jane Goodall says we have to be mindful whenever we cook whenever we eat whenever we consume so next slide please Also in terms of consumption, food is a critical thing in this pandemic we are in. So I'm just going to talk a bit, a bit about food security during this ongoing pandemic. And yeah, we all know that some of us are really in a, in a very comfortable situation cooking at home, but we also have to think about people who are deprived of food during this pandemic. And also, um, I'm going to talk about trends in cooking and, uh, and, and content production in food books. So there was also, during the pandemic, there was also a shift to other media like, like, uh, like YouTube and Facebook. And one of the more uh, popular, popular content when it comes to cooking is uh, Panlasang Pinoy by Vanjo Merano. It's quite popular in Facebook and his recipes are like uh, the book Kaina. It's very easy. It's 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 very easy to follow. It's very easy. It's 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 very practical. So all the recipes are available, and uh, uh, I think they're 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 easy to reach. Yeah. So you should check also Vanjo Merano on YouTube and Facebook. Next, please. Another trend also in, in the cookbook, in the culinary literature, are new editions of uh, old and existing cookbooks. So this is like bridging the past 
for the future generations. So I've, uh, earlier, I've talked about Let's Cook with Nora, which has a new edition published last year by, uh, and which was also updated by Nina Dazapuya. And the older one, this was published in, I think, 1979 or 1978. And also, Ige Ramos is coming up with a new edition of Maria Y. Orosa's cookbook. So this was this is a collection of, of Maria Orosa's recipes, which were published by her niece in the 1960s. And Ige Ramos is coming up with uh, a new uh, new edition right now. I think I think Iga is watching right now. And Iga, if you're watching right now, can you just plug in your book on the Facebook as a comment so people would know where to get that book? Um, next slide, please. So next, um, what do we want to see in the future? So the next thing I want to discuss is what will be the next grand Philippine cookbook? What will be the trend? What will be uh, the future direction of uh, food and literature? So we can have, we're, we're, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to push for recipes and translation. So you can see one book here by Rita Varti. It's called Gulay. It's, it's, uh, it's Philippine cookbook translated in Finnish. And there's also, uh, 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 something that's quite popular now by Mia Manansala. This is this is food and contemporary fiction. It's called Arsenic and Adobo, and it has a sequel, Homicide and Halo Halo. So the book talks about uh, a Filipino restaurant. It's a crime. It's a crime thriller book set uh, in a Chicago uh, Filipino restaurant. So it's exciting how, how the author mixes up mixes up um, uh, suspense and thriller with food cooking. So if also if for those who grew up in the 90s, if you're familiar with Como Agua para Chocolate by Laura Esquivel, uh, on which uh, each chapter of the book opens up with a recipe. And, and uh, what's, what, what I vividly recall from that book is the rose petal soup recipe. Uh, although it's a fictional recipe, but but it's quite interesting how Laura Escovel mixes up fiction and culinary writing. Okay, so I think I've talked about uh, I've talked about more than fifty books, and now I'd like to discuss with you where to get these books. So most of the books are available from these publishers. You have Anvil Publishing. You have the bookmark incorporated. You have from. Uh, you can also buy them from the kitchen bookstore. You can search all of these online. Uh, you can also get them from Gantala Press. Uh, the one in Batanes is published by Museo ng Kaalamang Katutubo or Muscat. Uh, the recipe books. You have recipe books from Mama Sitas, and you have books from the National Commission for the Culture and Arts. Yes, also books which are available from restaurants like Victorino's uh, restaurants. Uh, that's the Imas book. And from university presses like University of Santo, San Carlos Press and Center for Kapangpangan Studies, Holy Angel University. And in Negros, there's this low food community restaurant where you can buy that um, Negrense food cuisine. And lastly, um, uh, the book from the Cordilleras, you can get it from Philippine Task Force for Indigenous Peoples' Rights, or TFIP. So before I end my discussion, I also would want to talk about what we do at NBBB. Next slide, please. Uh, yeah, so we have the book note. This is, we're setting up the book note right now. So... Uh, these are 52 reading centers all over the Philippines. And we're glad to inform you that we have several sites in the Visayas. We have two sites in Capiz. We have one site in Aklan. And we have two more in Antique. We have three in Negros Oriental. One in Samar. And we have one in Sikihor. Next slide, please. So these are... These are non-traditional reading spaces 
for our kids and the kids' heart to enjoy Filipino reading. So it's not your usual library setup. So it can be like, like the one on the lower right. It's, it's a house on stilt in Tawi-Tawi. So we're setting up reading centers on unusual places to get for, for the kids and people to get more access to Filipino authored books. Next slide, please. Yeah, we're launching this program on November 18, 2021. So we'll be announcing that soon on our Facebook page. So do um uh yeah, do 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 catch us on November 18 and join us in our launching. We also next slide, please. We're also partnering with the Philippine International Comics Festival. And we have acti activities uh, uh, lined up this September. So you can just check, check uh, our PCOF's Facebook page listed below. I can just, I will just put that on the comment section of the, of the Facebook Live so you can access the events uh, of PCOF. And lastly, uh, can I go back to the previous slide, the red one? Lastly, on, on September 23, next week, we have the pitch workshop. So this is open to everyone. Uh, since we're, we're doing the Frankfurt Book Fair this October, we're encouraging everyone to join us in this pitch workshop. And uh, this is a way of, uh, of providing capacity, building initiatives to people uh, for you to, to help, for NBDB to help you pitch your work to international publishers. So maraming salamat and I hope you enjoyed our food tour this afternoon from Batanes to, to Sulu and Tawi-Tawi. Uh, maayong hapon again to everyone and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to all of your questions and I'd be glad to answer all of them if we have more time. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jim. We have We have two questions here are similar in terms of theme. I will read it. What are the characteristic ways of cooking of each regional group that you have observed based on the books you have gone through? This is from Jose de la Cruz. Interestingly, Gian San Jose also asked, what are the common ways of cooking in the Philippines regardless of ethnic groups? They're kind of similar. Okay. Uh, what have you observed? What, what there are universalities to cooking, and there are also uh, uh, yeah, what we call cultural diversities. One thing that's universal is cooking rice. So, mm -hmm. in all in all aspects, uh, in all in all areas of the Philippines, from Batanes to Tawi Tawi, uh, the way we steam our rice, the way we cook our rice, whether it's done in 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 pots and pans or whether it's done in bamboo, there's always the 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 that process of Washing the rice, adding water, and then uh, cooking it. So it's the way of the way we steam our rice. That's that I think is universal from from Batanes to Tawi Tawi. Uh, unlike when when uh, unlike in other areas like uh, I think in India or in the Middle East, there's a different way of cooking rice. So they don't really. They don't wash their rice. They add water. Um, uh, there's something that I saw on Facebook uh, a few weeks back that, that's very different from the way we cook rice. Mm -hmm. Also, um, one that's universal would be uh, um, I, I think there's always this, uh, there's all the, the universality of the presence of condiments. Uh, Sausawan, the one we call Sausawan, I think it's present everywhere. Of, of course, uh, there's a different Sausawan when you go north. There's also different Sausawan when you go south. But you always have your Sausawan for, for, for your dishes. That's true. It makes the food more masarap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's, that's all for our questions. We will share 
first the um encourage everyone i hope they were inspired with all the books you were saying 50 books that you've shown yeah. so when i go into the the ring of fernandez food writing award i hope that you are inspired with what was shared to us by director anthony so this is a project of the food Writers Association of the Philippines, the Doreen Gamboa Fernandez Food Writing Award 2021. The topic for this year is shellfish. It's a, we're looking for an 800 word English language essay. And you have to please submit this using a pen name. The deadline is on the 30th of November, 2021. Just email this to dgfawards at yahoo.com.ph. Selected references, contacts of inter interviewees, and endnotes, if pertinent, will not be included in the word count. Submissions are a way to show substance, writing skill, concern, and passion for pleasure that only Filipino food can bring. And for our criteria, content is at 50%, research at 40%, and style is 20%. Author is a allowed only two entries. Again, this is an 800 word English language essay. Send in separately to the same address, an ID file with your pen name, real name, address, email, landline, and mobile numbers. Good luck to Philippine food loving writers from around the world. For next week's Merienda Talk, we would like to ask also last words from Director Anthony. Yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed my presentation and um, I hope you get those books and um, try some of those regional cuisines. They're really interesting and they're really good. So uh, for those living in Luzon, why don't you try the Mindanao books? And for those living in 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 uh well, we can have exchange of books for those living in Visayas by the uh, no, the Mindanao books and yeah let's have an exchange let's have an exchange of cooking and yeah share with us share with Ilumaka's page on what what's your innovations and um when it comes thank you very much That's right sir thank you again for launching our merienda talks for next year for next week's Merienda Talk, we will have Doreen Fernandez and Ilongo Cuisine. So we're zooming right in to what Timplada is about. This is together with John Silva. He's the executive director of Ortigas Foundation Library. He is also from Iloilo City and a friend of Doreen Fernandez. We would like to invite everyone to please subscribe to Museums Matter. This is our channel on YouTube. We have all of our live streams here and also those from Chinatown Museum. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Again, it is Museums Matter. We are sharing also all of the contact information from Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art. Our Facebook is Ilomoka, Instagram, it's Ilomoka. And again, if you have any questions, collaborations, comments, whatever it is, please share it with us, Iloilo Museum of Contemporary Art at gmail.com. Thank you again and happy weekend.